more time, welcome to the prophetic word made more sure. The prophetic word made more sure. And you will always do well to pay attention to it. As to a light shining in the dark place until the day dawns. And the morning star of redemption rises in your heart. And the message that we bring to you today is entitled Johannesburg Needs Pocket Evangelism. Johannesburg Needs Pocket Pocket Evangelism. Johannesburg needs pocket evangelism. By the way, my immediate audience, my immediate audience is Johannesburg, Pretoria, Mpumalanga, part of the Northern Conference in South Africa, apart from the global village. And that's why today the message is saying Johannesburg needs pocket evangelism. And so please follow me very closely. Because when, when, when we talk about matters of evangelism, we, we want you to know that evangelism is not an idea that comes from Africa. Evangelism is not an idea from across the Atlantic or maybe in Europe or Asia. Evangelism is not a human idea. Evangelism is a divine concept, a very serious divine project. And that's why in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, Christ himself spoke and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives and recover of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now take note of verse 18. Christ himself says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit is upon me. Because he has anointed me, referring to the spirit. He says, I have been anointed by the spirit to preach good news to the poor. In other words, the work of preaching or extending gospel borders, proclaiming the gospel, the work of preaching, that does not require, does not require that, that you look for hands, you look for hands to be laid upon you in, in what we can term as old nation. You don't need to look for hands to be, to be placed on your head in what is termed ordination for you to preach. Preaching does not require ordination. Preaching requires anointing. And as Christ here is indicating, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because I have been anointed to preach. And so preaching is under the administration of the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost, and, and, and God chooses to anoint anyone according to his own discretion. If God is willing, he can anoint children to preach the gospel. No need for ordination. He can, he can anoint men. No need for ordination. He can anoint a woman 
to preach the gospel. No need for ordination. And that's why the Lord is saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Evangelism is a divine idea. And if on Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, the Lord is saying, I have been anointed to preach. In case you are wondering as to whether Christ was indeed a preacher or not, follow very closely. We can now get to the book of Luke and chapter 8. Luke and chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Let's find out if Christ was a preacher indeed, or he was just anointed for nothing. Luke 8, 1 to 3 declares, After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Now take note of this one. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another. He became itinerant, moving from one town and village to another. And the Bible record says, for the sake of proclaiming the good news. Very clear that Christ was the preacher. In fact, he never took preaching as something that, that can be handled as, 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 as a concept for delegation. God does not like delegation when it comes to matters of evangelism. It must be taken personal. And that's why we see him moving about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And so he was anointed to preach. Allow me at this point perhaps to indicate that when it comes to evangelism, there are different types of, there are different types of evangelism. Different types of evangelism. There's what we can term as public evangelism, or maybe even personal evangelism, and much more. That's why for today, I want to focus on what is termed as pocket. Pocket evangelism. Pocket evangelism. And, and, and I continue reading Luke chapter 8, 1 to 3. If I begin from this one again, it says, After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And then it says, The twelve were with him. The twelve were with him. And also some women, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, manager of Hero's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Now, take note of the reading. When Christ was traveling from one town and village to another preaching the gospel, he was not alone. The passage says that 12 were also with him. He chose not to delegate. He did evangelism in real practical dimension. He was the preacher, and the disciples were able to learn how it is done. So he was not alone. From one town and village to another, he was not traveling alone. The twelve were with him. And some of us like ending on the twelve. 
You begin with cross and then you want to end on the 12. When it comes to matters of evangelism, the passage continues. It says, and also some women. It says some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Allow me to mention to you that pocket evangelism is not ordinary. Pocket evangelism is not ordinary. Pocket evangelism is very, very extraordinary. Because this is the type of evangelism that comes after healing. No one can engage in pocket evangelism who has not been healed. Healing comes first. And after healing, pocket evangelism comes in because the Bible record says, the ladies that were following Christ from Capernaum to Bethlehem, Bethlehem to Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, he goes to another place called Cana. When the Lord was moving around, and, and in fact, for all information, you, you even see that some of them were married. Like, 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 like Joanna, Mrs. Cusa, she was a married lady. But the Bible record says she's among those who were healed and cured by the Lord. No one can stop anyone from following the Lord who has been healed. And so these ladies, because God healed them, they came together and said, no way. There is no way we can sit idle. We have been healed. We have been cleansed. We are now whole. Ladies, Susanna, Mary, why can't we engage in pocket evangelism? And the Bible record says these are the ladies who were supporting the mission, supporting Christ and his work out of their own means. Out of their own means. Supporting the work. They are moving from one town and village to another, and, and, and they are the ones who were supporting the work out of their own pockets, out of their own means. And this is what we call pocket evangelism. And this one is not cheap. This one is extraordinary. After God healed them, and then, and then they decided to embark on pocket evangelism. Healing comes first, and healing is critical. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 8 and verse 15, there is a lamentation. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 15, there is a lamentation. And it says, we hoped for peace, but no good has come. For a time of healing, but there was only terror. We looked for peace. For a time of healing, nothing was happening. It was only terror. And then on verse 22 of Jeremiah 8, the same, the same, the same chapter. And now on verse 22, there is a question. Is there no, there is a question. On verse 22, Jeremiah 8, it says, it says, is there no, is there no balm? Is there no balm in Gilead? How then is the wound of my people uh, not healed? How come that, that my people are not getting healed? There is balm in Gilead. There is medicine in Gilead. Physicians are there in Gilead. But, but my people are not getting healed. Very sad. Alas. Hey ho, and hey ho, alas, in the presence of medication, in the presence of medicine, in the presence of balm, those people are not getting healed. 
And that's why we are failing to engage in pocket evangelism because pocket evangelism only comes when somebody is healed. Like Susanna and Mary and Joanna and many others. When they became healed, then they decided to support God's work out of their own pockets. It comes after healing. Haggai 1 verse 9, God has a controversy. Haggai 1 verse 9, God has a controversy. He, he says in Haggai 1 verse 9, Haggai 1 and verse 9, you expected much, but lo, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away, declares the Lord. Why? Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each one of you is busy after his own house. Now, this is Haggai 1. And verse 9, God has a controversy with his people. God is complaining. He's saying, the, the, he's saying the, the, the appearance of my work, the appearance of my house, the, the, the appearance of my sanctuary, my temple is not okay. My church looks like a skeleton. While each one of you is busy after your own projects. God are going to church. God's people are getting to church. From time to time, getting to church, but their attention, their attention on evangelism is feeble. God is saying you have more attention on your work, you have more attention on your projects than you have attention on my church. My church is not looking okay. Oh, because your attention on your own projects is greater than your attention on my work. That's why pocket evangelism is very, very expensive. It comes after healing. When, when, when you are not healed, when, when, when you are not healed, and, 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 and you give anything to the church when you are not healed. We will see you having the challenge, we will see you having the challenge that Mr. and Mrs. Ananias had in Acts chapter 5. When you read from verse 1 all the way up to 10. Acts chapter 5, 1 up to 10, introduces Mr. and Mrs. Ananias, the, the couple that decided, the couple that decided they were going to sell, they were going to sell part of their property. And after selling their property, they agreed all oh, the money, the proceedings from that property will go to the church, will go to the apostles' feet. That was the agreement. But the Bible record says, if you read on, it says, it says Ananias and wife, they, they, they began to, to caucus and to talk and to discuss and to say, hey, I think we have many, many challenges around here at home. Now, assuming, assuming what they were supposed to take to the church was 7,000 U.S. dollars, they are now deciding maybe to send, for example, 2,500. And so Mr. and Mrs. Ananias together, they, they, they begin to, to make a plan. Why not just take 2,500 US dollars instead of the entire 7,000 US dollars? And that's what they did. Ananias decides he was going to take 2,500 US dollars to the Lord. A clear indication that he was not yet healed. Now this is what happens. This is what happens when somebody is not yet healed. Like Mary, Susanna, Joanna, and many others. When you are not yet healed, 
market, evangelism becomes, becomes a serious challenge because you will be taken to the Lord, you will be taken to the church, that which is not complete. And, 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 and as Ananias was approaching, as Ananias was approaching, the Lord speaks to Peter, the Holy Ghost speaks to Peter and says, the man who is coming, the man who is coming is bringing only 2,500. He has problems with pocket evangelism because he is not yet healed. What he is bringing is partial. And then, and then, and then, and then Peter watches and he sees Ananias coming and then Ananias comes and approaches and he surrenders 2,500 US dollars. Read on. Read on. Peter says, Peter says to him, hey, 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 hey. Why have you brought 2,500 US dollars instead of the entire amount? Are you not aware that when you do such a thing, you are messing around with the Holy Ghost? The Bible record says right there, and then Ananias fell down dead. He fell down dead. And then Peter looks around. He looks around. He turns around 360 degrees. He looks around and then he sees, he sees four guys over there. He sees some young men over there. Then he calls them and he says, can you please come? Can you please come? I want you to pick this corpse. I want you to pick this body, this corpse, and please go and bury it over there. Go and bury it over there. Even before the wife is informed about the death of the husband, even before the children are made to know that somebody has died, even before relatives are informed that Ananias has died, Peter says, pick him and, 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 and take him for burial over there. And, and the guys came. Uh, the, the, the young men came and they took him over there and they dug the grave, they dug the grave and buried him. The shortest burial program you have ever seen in the solar system. The shortest burial program. Even before relatives are informed. Because of messing around with pocket evangelism that should come after total healing. And the Bible record says, three hours later, the wife decided to come. As if she was making a fall-up. And as she was approaching, she's not aware that the husband has died. She comes approaching Peter and perhaps trying to appear a little bit more religious. You know, in the stance and landscaping of her movements. And perhaps singing. I'm pressing on. The upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. She approaches Peter. Then, 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 then Peter says, Mommy, can you tell me how much did you decide to bring to the church? Then, then she says, 2,500 US dollars. 2,500 US dollars. Peter is shocked. Mommy, so you agreed with your husband to lie and to bring to the church what is partial. You are bringing to the church what is not complete. A clear indication that you too, you are not yet healed. Is there no balm in Gilead? How come that those who are coming to worship me are not yet healed? They are failing to engage in real pocket evangelism. The one that comes after total healing. And then, and then, and then Peter speaks to Sapphira, the wife to Ananias and says, Mommy, Mommy, can you see those guys over there? They have come from burying your husband. 
They have come from burying your husband. And, and they'll come and pick you also over there. The lady, according to scriptures, uh, on verse 10, the lady, the lady, the lady fell down dead. And she too was picked by uh, the young man for burial where the husband was buried. And the entire couple, the entire family finished in quick succession. All because of messing around with pocket evangelism. Taking to the Lord what is not complete. Because pocket evangelism comes after healing. And so Ananias was buried close to the husband even before the children were informed. And so the children, they remained, they remained back home with what should have come to the church, the 4,500 US dollars. And that's what now the children we are going to be using when, 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 the, when, the, when the parents are gone. When the parents are gone, so they'll begin depending on stolen property. I've got a question. What kind of investments are you embarking upon? What kind of assets are you going to leave behind for your children? Are they items and properties which were not surrendered to the Lord? Is that what you call investment? Johannesburg needs pocket evangelism. And what I say to Johannesburg, I am saying to Pretoria, I am saying to Cape Town, I am saying to Harare, I am saying to Lusaka, I am saying to, to places like Havron, without excluding Nairobi and Washington, London, Moscow. The pocket evangelism that is required in, in Johannesburg, because Johannesburg means, you know, the, 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 the city of Johannesburg uh, is also known as the city of God. Johannesburg is the city of God. What I am saying to Johannesburg, I am saying to all, we need pocket evangelism. Mr. and Mrs. Ananias, they, they, they disappeared in quick succession because of messing around with pocket evangelism. They were not healed. Taking to the Lord what is not complete. Taking to the church what is partial. And that's why the Lord is complaining and he is saying, my house remains, remains a skeleton. Wow, each one of you, you are so busy after your own house. You are neglecting giving full attention on my church. You will disappear like Mr. and Mrs. Ananias. Alas, hey ho, and hey ho, alas. And for your own information, the name Ananias means God is gracious. God is gracious. And so Ananias and wife were messing around with God's grace. Messing around with God's grace. Honey, honey, even if we only take, we only take 2,500, I think God understands our weaknesses. It's okay. It's okay. We, we can just take what is partial to the church. It's okay. It's okay. God is gracious. God understands messing around with God's grace. We, we are failing to understand that God's grace is an international lecturer. Titus 2 and verse 11 declares, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, and it teaches us to say no to sin and ungodliness. And to live self-controlled, upright lives in this present age. God's grace does not condone violence. God's grace does not condone breaking God's requirements. God's grace is an international lecturer. The moment you become a police holder of the plan of redemption, you are supposed when, when you stumble to come to the Lord, to come to grace, and when you come to grace, grace will tell you this day forward, go and sin no more. God bless you without reserve. We need to have respect for 
pocket evangelism, the one that comes after total, that comes after total healing, you have been healed. Because, because you have utilized the balm in Gilead, you are completely healed. And because you are completely healed, you'll be taken to the Lord what belongs to the Lord in full measure. Mr. and Mrs. Ananias died in style. They, 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 they were buried like, 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 like somebody who has died from cholera. No church service. It was a burial of disgrace. Leading to a resurrection of disgrace. When, 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 when you don't live with pocket evangelism, you don't live with pocket evangelism, you are failing to support God's work as God intends. When you shall die, when you shall die, your, your, your burial will become a burial of disgrace and, and your resurrection will become a resurrection of disgrace. No hope beyond the grave for a higher rank of destiny. I want to appeal to you, Johannesburg and Pretoria, and all the global village, have respect for the balm of Gilead. We need to be completely healed so that we can take care, we can take care of God's programs and his church so that God's church stops looking like a skeleton. God bless you in a very special way. As you choose to align yourself and to have your feet planted on the rock of God's changeless word, on the plateau of moral excellency with stamina of pure religion. Pocket evangelism for the golden city of Johannesburg and the entire world. After listening to this message, Please go and sin no more. Shall we pray? Our great king of radiating glory in a very special way today. We want to thank you so much for, 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 for pocket evangelism that only comes when somebody has been completely healed. Like Susanna and Mary and many others. We plead with you. Touch our hearts today for reconstruction so that we can take care of your church while we are still measured alive. We don't want to be buried in disgrace and to be resurrected in disgrace. Take care of our families because we pray it in Jesus our hope of future glory, the indispensable framework of Christian victory and the backbone of triumph on the platform of worship. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Please listen to this song. Oh, uh -huh.
Oh, oh.